Record. Alrighty. Welcome to the Media Current Contrib Half Hour. It is our last meeting of February. It's not a leap year, so there are only 28 days this month. And today we're going to continue working on some tests for the date module because the date need, module needs more tests. The agenda is straightforward, kick off with housekeeping, I'll look at some news items that came up recently, and then we'll dig into the date module. Housekeeping, my name is Damien McKenna. The captions turned off. My name is Damien McKenna. I am community lead at Media Current. I use the pronouns he, him. I've been involved in Drupal since 2007, do a bunch of things, but people recognize me as that guy with the bunny ears who hops around issue queues. My time is sponsored by Media Current. We are a full service digital agency that implements world-class open source software development strategy and design to achieve defined goals for enterprise organizations seeking a better return on investment. And we love working with Drupal. These meetings are set up as a community project. Go to drupal.org slash project slash contrib underscore half underscore hour to see the upcoming schedule that I'll get to in a moment. And if you leave a comment in today's issue, you will get issue credit. And I have been going through the backlog of uh, meetings from the past number of months getting them all uploaded onto our YouTube channel. And I'm almost caught up fully. I'll see how many more I can get done um, tomorrow. So if you have attended a meeting and you have not left a comment to say you were present, please do so because uh, I love giving out issue credit. So, um, Let's see, and we adhere to the Drupal Code of Conduct. Go to drupal.org slash DCOC if you have any questions or if you have not read it recently. And again, uh, if you have ideas for topics, uh, I'd love to hear them. We had one request to look at how to handle, I guess, submodule um, and API consistency and stuff. So I think we might look into that next week. So a couple of news items that came up last week and weekend, Florida Drupal Camp was on and it was my first time using the gather town, gather.town, however they want to call it, system that they used for moving around between the different rooms for the conference and it was kind of neat. Uh, so it's a virtual uh, represent, it's a visual representation of whatever layout you want to build. I think it comes with some kind of cookie cutter things, but you can customize it as the event host. And so build out the rooms however you want and they had recreated the campus that they had used for the last number of years, um, the college campus. So you walk into the foyer and there were these um, kind of hangout chat areas where people were just hanging out and chatting. And then you went off to one side or you, you moved up through the building and there was a lunch areas and then you pa went past there to um, where the presentations were held and you went into the room for the presentation and then you got the details on what zoom channel to use etc and it was really kind of neat uh, you could as you walked past people if you had video turned on or audio turned on as you walked past other people they would see and hear you and likewise you them and you could kind of spontaneously have conversations with people or see that there might be other people having a conversation near you and walk over and join them. It was kind of a neat system. 
ultimately. And I, I think it's a good option for groups who want to do virtual events, kind of like a Drupal camp or something. Um, so that was really neat. Uh, I bought myself a ticket just to see how it would work because I heard some folks raving about it on Twitter. And sure enough, it was pretty cool. So next month we have Nerd Summit coming up on the 19th and to 21st, then Midcamp the following week and DrupalCon Global in April. And as always, if you go to drupal.org Drupal slash community slash events, that has become the new event portal for all things Drupal eventy throughout the world. So um, news, I mentioned before that the package, that the module project system, or I guess the project system as a whole had been expanded on Drupal.org recently. So you don't have to have a Drupal or some sort of module code base or theme code base. Now you can just do packages of other things like uh, JavaScript libraries. And they have turned, uh, they've pushed this further. So now the packages that are published there can be also published on NPM. So uh, making it further or more easy to reuse Drupal JavaScript and related things elsewhere, which is kind of neat. Um, anything else? Anybody else get to go to DrupalCon, Drupal Camp Florida, or have any other news they'd like to share? Um, the couple days has launched their call for papers. If you go to 2021, .decoupledays.com, you will see a happy website. I mean it this time. <laughs> Actually, even if you just go to a couple days, that should redirect you to couple days. Okay, I'll open it up here so I can add it to the meeting notes. Excellent. That is July. So plenty of time for folks to plan to attend that and get their presentations in. When did the presentations have to be in by? I believe it's March 1st. Uh, May, May 1st. That's six days. That's right. Yeah, May, May 1st. I don't think that's right either because uh, frankly, uh, I thought we were gonna announce call for papers on, uh, on April 1st. Wow, that's wrong too. That's the twenty. Hey, look at that! I have work to do on my website. Um, let me get the red call for papers, and uh, everything will be great. I believe that it's going to be. I believe that it's in two weeks, two to three weeks. Uh, I will update you as soon as okay. I can. The form okay. here says by the end of Thursday, March fifth, which is yeah. next Thursday. That also says 2020, so that's... That is know. true as well, okay. I understand that this is the longest year in the world, but it's not that long. So I will get that updated. Uh, okay. Thank you for that out. No worries. So it might just be pointing to the old go, form instead of the new go form. The, uh, go to the top, please, for me, and hit submission. Big yellow button. There. There's the right one. There's okay. The Let's scroll down. April 1st. Oh, that's this the is not a joke. Yeah, okay. So that's the deadline is April 1st. Okay. Ooh. Good, good, good. Feel free to edit out that 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 other part and I will fix the, the website today. Okay. Excellent. Well, thank you for that. So at least it's the correct information is there. So all right, excellent. Um, cool, thank you, Marky. Anybody else have other things they would like to share? I 
I do, Damien. This is Amy June. Um, we're organizing the Community Summit for DrupalCon. And this year, it's always been free, but attached to ticket price. But this year, the Community Summit is going to be absolutely free. Um, I don't know if that's up on the website yet, but that will be a little bit detached. The summits are detached from DrupalCon this year, but the Community Summit is April 6th, which is a Tuesday. It'll be a four hour event. Um, last year, it we didn't know how Hopin would work. And so it was a lot of content delivery where this year we're switching it up and it's gonna be more discussion based and birds of a feather and really talking about community stuff versus people just lecturing at us. So um, uh, yeah, that's April 6th. And like I said, it'll be a totally free event. So that's separate to the main DrupalCon itself, the week before or something? Yeah, wow, all, yeah. Of the, hmm. all of the summits are a little bit off of, off. they're not during the event anymore. They're, you know, in their separate little spaces now. Oh, wow. Neat. It also removes the competition for other things. So you could, you could attend all of them. Exactly. Instead of having to decide, am I going to this one or... Neat. I like that. Um, I hope that brings more people to the summit. I think that'd be awesome. And guess who finished his water bottle? Already. Thank you for that, Amy June. Uh, I look forward to that. Um, anybody else have anything else they'd like to share? If not, we can dive into the stuff, the main topic for today. So as mentioned, I wanted to continue work on testing the date module. And as mentioned before, this is the date module for Drupal 7, which provides <clears throat> excuse me, a bunch of fields, uh, field API fields and a bunch of APIs for dealing with dates and date data. It is quite the expansive module with tons of different bits and pieces. Um, but as with all things that are in kind of a maintenance mode, it needs more test coverage to make sure we don't inadvertently break things. And what I'm working on right now is uh, test coverage for the all day functionality and the um, APIs that use it. And uh, while trying to finish off the next release of the module, um, it was pointed out that this one feature change had inadvertently broken data for uh, existing sites and while trying to work on an update script and then test coverage for the update script to fix existing sites and existing data, ran into the fact that the uh, existing functionality for the all day options didn't work as expected because it wasn't properly identifying all day options to be an all day record. Um, so uh, I first built out the, the module includes a, if I pull it up here, includes a feature based module that has a bunch of test data structures for testing the different pieces. And so that was built out to add a field for the all day option. Um, and so then last time we worked on um, the 
functional tests that went through and created a node with an all day option checked, checked to see what the data was like and turned out that the, when you check the all day option, it doesn't, uh, it, it either doesn't save the data properly or doesn't display the data properly. So we need to dig further. So now we're going to look at some of the API, some of the internal API in the module itself. There is a, as things happen, the module was built as with an API in its center, and then all of these fields and everything else wrap around it. So there's the date API module and it has unit tests. Well, it's called, it's not really a unit test, but um, uh, this is where I'm going to add some test coverage to uh, see how different pieces work. Um, and we can refactor it to be an, an actual unit test later. But the idea is we have a function called date is all day. And the idea is that this takes two strings, the starting date and the ending date, and determines based upon how these strings look, it will determine whether or not they represent a date that covers the entire day. So this function is supposed to return true or false based on whether it is the date strings either are or are not uh, representative of a full date. Um, so in theory, um, if we have two date strings, string one is one thing, string two is similar, they should in theory uh, be able to, we should be able to pass those two date strings into the function and get back a response and then determine whether or not the response is valid or not. Um, so we should be able to do assert, say assert true for the response uh, when the string is, when the, the strings represent an all day uh, pairing of dates. So assert true is these two date strings represent a an all day or something. Um, so first things first is to work out what format um, it should be in. Um, actually, let me expand the function name. Uh, I'm going to call it test date is all day because this test method, its whole purpose in life is to test this function. Um, I'm going to do some, make some copies of this and we'll add a comment at the beginning explaining the rationale for what the test is supposed to do. So the first one is uh, two empty strings. This should always return false. So I'm gonna change it to assert false and then say two empty strings return false. So the idea is pass in two empty strings into the function and they come back as false. 
Uh, likewise, if I did one valid string and one invalid string, they, it should still return false because the very first part of the function checks to make sure that both strings are not empty. Um, okay. Uh, next thing is to get, so we'll start with that as the very first option. And then we'll do a very simple option uh, of we'll preload two date values that are supposed to be all day. So uh, the, this is in the date time format. So I am going to do, oh, let me see here just a second. It took about a minute to run, yeah, a minute to run the existing tests. If I comment out the one existing test function and run that, run the test again, should take just a moment. Um, I'm going to use the PHP parser in Drush to uh, get example strings that are in date time format. Oh wait, I don't need to. So this here, the regular expression, there's a certain point in a software engineer's life when they can kind of generally ascertain what a regular expression is looking for. Um, I think I leveled up. Um, so this looks for um, a string in the format that has four numbers, a dash, two numbers, a dash, two numbers, and then optionally a, wait, no, sorry, a string that then has two numbers, a colon, two numbers, a colon, two more numbers. So it's standard international uh, date time format. So something like 2021-0225 space. And then I'm in Ireland, it is 1825. Um, let's start with 0000. And then for this to be an all day thing, it should then Go to 2359, 59, I believe. So, okay. Um, 40 seconds to run the full, run the test and the very first test to make sure that uh, two empty strings return false passed correctly. So now I'm going to run it again and see if what it comes back with for this test. Um, my understanding of the all day logic is that this should work. Um, if it is not, then I'll have to dig into the logic a little more. And, uh, okay, that is fantastic. So this is second, so the second test works great. This is a, a valid all day date pair. So, um, all right, that is the, the basic functionality uh, 
correct so that it is able to properly confirm that date from zero zero from midnight to one second before midnight the same day counts as all day what happens if i do um one second after midnight and then to midnight the next morning does that count this should not but let's let the test run anyway just to see on an aside one reason to uh, refactor this to be a unit test instead of a full web test is that it would probably have the amount of time it takes to run because it doesn't have to build the Drupal install and everything. It would just load up a bunch of PHP scripts and directly run the uh, test functions. But that's for another day. Okay, so that is good to know. Um, so let's confirm, clarify these uh, comments. So the first one is uh, the first test, sorry, the second test confirms that a valid all day date pair starts at midnight and ends one second before midnight, both on the same, both the same day. And so then the next one is, it is not a valid all day date pair to start one second after midnight and end on midnight the next day. So that would then be return false. Um, I can change the response later. Um, so, Okay. Um, let's add one more. So there is a granularity option. One more before we leave it for the day. Uh, granularity option is second. And so the idea is if we tell it, um, minute instead of the default second, then it would be, it would only care about the minutes in the uh, arguments. So let's rerun the test real quick. Um, so then this is a uh, confirm the granularity option works with minutes and then we'll do another one that confirms hours and then we'll pass in the hour string and then that would be 23. And then that works. So that is correct. Um, there is a fourth argument to the function that covers the increment. So the idea being that uh, with the time field, you can set it um, to say, have a, an increment of five minutes or 15 minutes. That way, when you open up a date selector, it's going to only show you 
5, 10, 15, etc. Or if you set it to 15 minute increments, um, it'll be 15, 30, 45, and 0. Or if you set the increment to, zero, to 1, it'll show you everything from 1 second, or everything right up to uh, 1 right up to 59. Um, sorry, 0 to 59. Um, but we will deal with the increment piece another time. Uh, this itself is a good step in the right direction. And that can be it for today. All right, uh, so thank you for joining us. We'll be back, wait, next week is not February 25th. We'll be back again next week on, I think, the 3rd with, um, we'll have a, a maintainer's chat around different things, including uh, module dependencies and APIs and abstractions and stuff. So thank you for joining us. Hope everybody has a fantastic week and uh, we'll see you online.